Hello and welcome to Baldur's Gate 3, where free means also the amount of times I'm recording this section. So they will create our character. I know what I want to do, so let's go straight to it. We're creating custom origin. Since anything else is, is not available in early access. Once it's out I'll go through it. Background, Acolyte, you have spent your life in service to a temple, learning sacred rites and providing sacrifices to the god or gods you worship. Serving the gods and discovering their sacred works will guide you to greatness. Charlatan, you are an expert in manipulation, prone to exaggeration and more ha than happy to profit from it. Bending the truth and turning allies against each other will lead to greater success down the road. Criminal. You have a history of breaking the law and survive by leveraging less than legal connections. Profiting from a criminal enterprise will lead to greater opportunities in the future. Entertainer. You live to sway and subvert your audience, engaging common crowds and high society alike. Preserving art and bringing joy to the hapless and downtrodden heightens your charismatic aura. Folk hero. You are a champion of the common people, challenging tyrants and monsters to protect the helpless. Saving innocence in imminent danger will make your legend grow. Guild Artisan Your skill in a particular craft has earned you membership in a mercantile guild, offering privileges and protection while engaging in your art. Repairing and discovering rare crafts will bring you inspiration. Noble, you were raised in a family among the social elite, accustomed to power and privilege. Accumulating renown, power, and loyalty will raise your status. Outlander, you grew up in the wilds, learning to survive far from the comforts of civilization. Surviving unusual hazards of the wild will enhance your prowess and understanding. Sage, you are curious and well-read, with an unending thirst for knowledge. Learning about rare lore of the world will inspire you to put this knowledge to greater purpose. Soldier, you are trained in battlefield tactics and combat, having served in a militia, mercenary company or officer corps. Show smart tactics and bravery on the battlefield to enhance your prowess. Urchin, after surviving a poor and bleak childhood, you know how to make the most out of a very little. Using your Swiss street smarts bolsters the spirit of for the journey ahead. We will go with Sage. Our name is, of course, it's if not. And okay, High Elves. High Elf. Heirs of the mystical Feywild. High Elves value magic in all its forms, and even those who do not study spellcraft can manipulate the weave. Wood Elf. These elves spend their reclusive lives in Feyrun's forests. Decades of training in archery and camouflage are enhanced by an otherworldly swiftness. Tifling. Asmodeus. Bound to Nessus, the deepest layer of the house, these tieflings inherited the ability to wield fire and darkness from the archdevil Asmodeus's infernal bloodline. Mephistopheles, descended from the archdevil Mephistopheles, these tieflings are gifted with particular affinity for arcane magic. Zario, tieflings from Zario's bloodline are empowered with martial strength and can channel searing flame to punish their enemies. Drow, low sworn Drow, raised by Loth's cult in the city of Menzoberranzan, these Drow embody the virtues of a corrupt and merciless goddess. Loth marks her followers with bright red eyes, so those in the Underdark will learn to fear them inside. Seldarin, Drow can be found seeking allies from all over Faerun, I mean to settle their conflicts with Loth and each other by any means necessary. 
humans, the most common face in Faerun. Uh, humans are known for their tenacity, creativity and endless capacity for growth. Yfianki, peerless warriors from the astral plane. Yfianki are known for their legendary silver blades and red dragon mounts. They seek the total destruction of mind flayers whose ancient empire enslaved the Yfianki for millennia. Dwarf, cold. These dwarves are known for their confidence and keen intuition. The culture of their deep kingdom values family, ritual and fine craftsmanship. Shield. Great losses in ancient wars against goblins and orcs have led these dwarves to adopt a cynical mindset, but they will endure anything to restore their ancestral homelands. Half Elf, uh, High, a touch of the Feywild Fey Mag remains in Half Elves with this bloodline, and even those untrained in magic possess a hint of wild power. Like their wood elf parent, these half elves have a quickened stride and an eye for stealth. Yet many break away from isolation in Faerun's forests to explore the rest of the realms. Drow. Most half drows result from liaisons between Seldarian drow and surfacers. While half drow inherited a few magical gifts, they aren't usually raised in the Underdark. Halfling, Lightfoot. Stealthy but social. Halflings travel all over Faerun to make names for themselves. Strongheart. Legend has it that dwarven blood gave Stronghearts their hardiness. Resistant to poison and well springs of endurance, these halflings easily hold their own. Lightfoot. Okay, that was. Gnomes. Forest gnome. Even smaller than their cousin cousins and twice as reclusive. Forest gnomes are a rare sight in Faerun. They master magic and craftsmanship in the distant idyllic groves. Deep gnomes, more guarded than their surface cousins. Deep gnomes survive in the Underdark with dark vision and skillful stealth. Croc gnome, the most commonly seen gnomes in, on Faerun's surface. Croc gnomes are named as such for their hardness and affinity for metal. Okay, we will go Tiefling of Mephistopheles. Appearance will stick to the female. Where to next? This voice is fine. But let me check the face. Um. Okay, this one is fine. For the horns, I want the ones that look like a ram. Horns. They can be twisted. These or oh, yep. These ones. This for skin color, I want it to be dark, I think. Okay, this one will be fine, I think. Let's take this. I feel light too. Um, let's take a look at this one. Eyes. Eyes are supposed to be not the human ones. This will be perfect. For her, um, I don't remember which one it was. So we probably will go through all of them. Okay, so uh, it's the ones I'm looking for were kind of long and curly, you know, just like this one. No. Mm, that would not be that bad, but I saw them. I've picked them twice. I just don't remember the numbers. Wasn't it? I think. I swear they are real. They exist.
Might need it on the goose after all. Okay, we'll st stick with this. We don't need no beard. For the hair, it's supposed to be blue. It would be dark, right? Not Never mind. This should be fine. Don't twin hands. Plus, I need to add some. Oh, I need to add some grain. For tattoos, our tattoos will be white. Okay, I like this one. And for the makeup, it should also be. Right. Great. And the third thing. The class. Barbarian. The strong embrace the wild that hides inside. Keen instincts, primal physicality, and most of all, an unbridled, unquenchable rage. Bart, you know music is more fancy than a fancy. It is power. Through study and adventure, you have mastered song, speech, and the magic within. Clerics are representatives of the, of the gods they worship, wielding potent divine magic for good or ill. And here we have a couple of domains. Uh, the life domain is an aspect of many good di deities, offering spells that protect and restore the mind, body, and soul. The light domain is offered by deities of justice, majesty, and primordial flame, providing spells that spill darkness and harm the undead. A tricker domain, a domain shared by wicked, chaotic, and mischievous deities alike. Those who channel trickery specialize in deception and illusion magic. And of course we have multiple deities to select from. Saloon, the lady of silver presides over the moon, stars, and navigation. Her power over the heavens is constantly challenged by her sister Shar, who seeks to plunge the world into internal shadow. As the greater deity of darkness, Shar is feared for her power over the night, secrets, and loss. She is locked in eternal conflict with her twin sister Selene, goddess of the moon. Nimbus is the lord of battles, overseeing war and its soldiers. He is the embodiment of honorable combat and condemns needless bloodlust. Third, the blind god rules over law and justice, encouraging valiant acts from his followers and relentlessly pursuing oathbreakers. Bane is a dark paragon of hate, fear, and tyranny. He ascended to godhood alongside Baal and Miracle, but loves them both for taking power he believes is rightfully his. The Water Helm is an eternal century among the gods, representing guardians across the plains. After more than a century of fading worship, Helm's power was restored with the second Sundown. A member of the dead free with Baal and Bane, Merkel is a cruel necromancer turned god, inspiring the fear of death and immortals. He often clashes with Kalimbor, the even-handed judge of fallen souls. Ilmater, the crying god protects the oppressed and perse persecuted. His clergy is sworn to alleviate suffering, even if that means taking on that pain personally. Mistra, as the mother of all magic, Mistra oversees the weave and spread arcane knowledge to mortal spellcasters. Her clerics preserve ancient lore and protect bastions of magical energy. Ogma is the god of inspiration and invention, sharing knowledge with the world through his bars and clerics. Unlike many other deities, Ogma accepts all mortal alignments into his clergy. Far past but distant, Kalimvo guides the dead to their appropriate plane in the afterlife. His clergy provides last rites across Faerun, but also destroy undead that have escaped Kalimvor's judgment. Baal is the notorious god of murder, reborn after each of his descendants descendant were viciously slain. He has a tenuous alliance with Merkel and Bane, the three having attained divinity in a bargain with the fallen god Irgul. 
Muradin, the old hammer, is a dwarven god worshipped by smiths, artisans and miners alike. He and Laduquer are constantly at odds. Corlon Lerithian, creator of the elf, elves, Corlon Lerithian oversees the elven pantheon as a whole, providing blessings to those who study art, magic and nature. Gor Glittergold, the watchful protector, is the king of the gnomish gods, a deity of humor, game cutting, protection and trickery. Yondala, as the mother of the Halfling Pantheon, Yondala is known for her kindness and open mind, encouraging her followers to protect the home, hearth, and nature. Lolf, the matrily reviled matriarch of the Troll Pantheon, Lolf holds sway over spiders, the Underdark, and the wicked creatures of the demo demon web pits. Her primary goal is to corrupt all Troll, transforming them into heartless cultists. Timora is a bright-faced goddess of fortune who favors those who gamble and set out on adventure with the utmost skill and daring. Miliki is the goddess of forests and the creatures that live within them. She is a remote and spiritual deity, often spoken of, but in the quests of fortress, forests. Elistraye is the goddess of gold-aligned draw, beauty, song and freedom. The dark maiden desires balance between all races and struggles against her mother Loth's corrupt aims. Laflander, the morning lord, is the god of the dawn and spring, of birth and beginnings. He is invoked to Christ and both new ventures and new life. His followers embrace growth and renewal and despise the undead. Talos represents the uncaring and destructive force of nature. His followers see life as a set of random effects in a sea of chaos and take what they can. For who can say when Talos will strike next? That's all for Cleric. Druids channel the elemental forces of nature and share a deep kinship with animals. Mastery of wild shape allows them to transform into beasts from all over the realms. Fighters have mastered the art of combat, wielding weapons with unmatched skill and wearing armor like a second skin. Fueled by the oath you swore to uphold justice and righteousness, you are the beacon of hope in dark times. Uh, oath of the Ancients. You fight on the side of light in the cosmic struggle against darkness to preserve the sanctity of life and beauty of nature. Oath of Devotion. Following the ideal, ideal of the knight in shining armor, you act with honor and virtue to protect the weak and pursue the greater good. Rangers are unrivaled scout and trackers, honing a deep connection with nature in order to hone their favorite prey. With stealth skill and uncanny reflexes, rogue's versatility lets them get the upper hand in almost any situation. Sorcerers are natural spellcasters, drawing on inherited magic from a gift or bloodline. Uh, we can choose either wild magic, your powers come from ancient forces of chaos, they churn within you, waiting to burst free at any time, or draconic bloodline, your veins carry draconic magic, the result of a powerful dragon ancestor. And additionally we can choose the type of dragon, which is amazing. Okay, warlock. Bound by a pact to an all-powerful patron, warlocks trade their loyalty for supernatural abilities and unique magic. The Fiend. Warlocks in service to fiends walk towards corrupting destructive ends, inten intentionally or otherwise, and receive hellish blessings in return. The Great Old One. Warlocks bound to eldritch beings in the Far Realms walk towards inscrutable goals, gaining strange powers over entropy and the mind. They also, also should be a fey and celestial, I believe. Wizards master the arcane by specializing in individual schools of magic, combining ancient spells with modern research. We are going for Bart. Because why not? And... My... Instrument of choice is there because you can even hit someone over the head with it. For cantrips, I will swap blade ward for. Which one was it? Mm. Friendship. I'll leave Vicious Mockery, is useful. I will swap healing ward for cure wounds. 
It's stronger, but it requires us to touch the creature we are healing. This and the whispers for... Where is it? Speak with animals. Tasha's hideous laughter, I will leave. And heroism... Oh, okay, I will swap. Heroism for... Mm -mm -mm. This and this person should be okay. So we have two spells for, for out of battle and we have two for battle. We get additional country from our um, race, Mage Hand, which is useful. Our base uh, ability is Charisma. And let's go to the skills. So right now we have proficiency in arcana and arcana in history granted by sage. Mm, the ones suggested for us to take are deception, performance and persuasion. I'll get rid of deception because we will be truthful part and instead I will take... see this is what I hope would, would be indicated which of those skills corresponds to which ability, because this is important. I would like to give to either animal handling, since we, I want to speak, yeah, I'll give it to animal handling. Um, and usually I would change, swap out performance for um, medicine or nature, but we'll leave it like this. And abilities, where we can change the skills. We can have one plus two, one... Oh, so this is where it shows. <laughs> Really could have left it here. There was no reason for it. To not, never mind. I can take one from this. Unfortunately, I can raise this any higher. So I would like to put this one into wisdom. Actually, I think we don't need that much. Into, into, yeah, we can only have plus one, plus two, one plus three, and the rest can have plus one. And this is our part. This is Evla. I think she looks alike. Tell me. And this I will do on my own. I need to keep some secrets from you. So for now, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you tomorrow on the stream. Bye!